What I'd like to show you is that Maya 2011 also has a visual representation of these uh, graph curves. And you can access those by um, selecting on the uh, controller that has the keyframes on it. And then uh, in your marking menu, you hold down the space bar, come right over here to animate. And um, let's see, create motion trail. Let's check our options under edit reset settings. And then go ahead and say create motion trail. And you can see that it's dropped numbers out here. Those numbers actually coincide with the frame number at which that vehicle uh, is located um, on that path. See if I zoom out that each one of these uh, keyframes is represented, or each one of these uh, frames of the animation are represented here. Um, so if I go ahead in and do the same manipulation on this curve, you can see visibly how that changes the path and the speed at which uh, the vehicle is uh, traveling in that animation. So it, it makes it very easy to see what's happening uh, when you have visual representation like this. When the, the uh, frames are further apart, of course the car is traveling faster. When they're closer together, they're traveling slower uh, because there's more frames involved. So um, it's probably a lot of information for this first step. But if you go ahead in here and manipulate these curves and then do your uh, playback, let's go ahead and do that. In your playback window, you'll be able to see, oops, your camera was encompassing that, uh, the effect of the curve manipulation there. See how slow it got there at the end where the there's a lot of numbers grouped together in here. All right, you can see that it speeds up along here and then slows down on the curve, speeds up a little bit and then slows down again. So if I were to come back in here, grab this curve and continue to manipulate it, you can see the difference in the speed. Go ahead and talk about additional tools that you can use for creating a simple animation for your vehicle. Uh, the first thing I'd like to do is go ahead and locate the camera and position that a little bit better. So we'll go ahead to our window, outliner, and uh, select our camera. And there we have it. So uh, with our view in mind, Let's go ahead and see what's happening here already. All right, so we're, we have our car in our uh, range, and we just want to um, make sure that our camera is at the angle and the position that we wanted. So let's come on back here and get our camera again. Uh, all right, so now that we have that, let's go ahead and I'm going to position that as low as possible. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and not lock down any of this information yet. We just need to make sure that we're not grabbing our camera accidentally. So we'll go ahead and turn that guy off. Now, if we come in here and step through these keyframes for this animation, we can see that uh, because we just have one in between here, that the car looks like it's sliding. Although, though I like that, I don't want it sli sliding so much into the turn. Um, I want it looking like it's driving up to the turn first. So, with that in mind, I'm going to go here to my top down view and uh, select on my car. Go ahead and zoom in there. 
And again with my translation node, which is what we're keyframing so far, I'm going to go ahead and select that. And uh, now we'll go ahead to back to the perspective view. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm on frame 37. I'm going to go ahead and select on this little icon right down here, which is Auto Keyframe Toggle. Now, it's very important to know that when this is on, every movement that you make is going to be recorded as a keyframe. Now, there's advantages to that. So if you go in here and then turn this, it automatically generates a keyframe. And you don't have to do it manually up here. But the danger of that is, is that um, you have to be very careful about moving things uh, unless you intend on moving them. All right, so when coming into this curve, now I'm going to be beginning to sharply turn the tires at this point, and I do want, think I want it skidding around that curve. So the next keyframe I'm going to select is here, which is rotating, and maybe I'm going to swing that back end out just a little bit. So, as I come into the curve, I'm steering, steering, and then I want to kind of start to lose my back end here. And I'll probably start losing it sooner than that, but we'll see what that has to offer. Alright, and then maybe I want it to regain a little bit of that control and go ahead and bring it back a little bit. So I've got a bit of a swing out on the back end there, but then it's corrected. And I think this keyframe is a little too soon to have this correction. So I'm going to go back into my outliner here and I'm going to select on that and I'm going to move by simply middle mouse clicking on that. Careful to make sure that you move it along that line. All right. So what I've done is change the timing of my animation. Now that frame comes uh, later in this animation. The car will be sliding a little bit more. All right, so if we scrub through this animation, this turn here isn't quite right yet, but we uh, begin to see a loss of control of the vehicle here. We actually should start to spin out right about here. So I'm going to go ahead and make that adjustment. Let's see what we've got spinning. not crazy about this keyframe right here I think that one needs to go away now that we have a few others in here because that's what's keeping my car looking like it's still under control so let's see what happens if I go ahead in here and delete keyframe 50 on my um, Y I'm going to select that delete it and now, when we scrub through the animation, what does it look like? Hmm. All right, let's take another look at that. All right. Let's go ahead in here, select F, grab that again. So what I want to see happen is to have a broader line here and not so hairpin sharp. This is what 
I believe is disrupting the flow of that animation. And so I'm going to go right in here and grab that. And I'm just going to say frame mode so that we can see that this is what ha what is happening is that this keyframe is coming to a peak here and then back down. Now the way that we can fix that is by uh, go ahead in here and um, scale that time.